This episode comes with a very strong content warning for frank discussion of, and media clips involving, rape and sexual harassment. As we saw in our previous episode on this topic, there's a pervasive and long-standing pattern in Hollywood of playing the sexual assault of men for laughs. Oh no, no dear, no, 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 no dear, no. Oh. Just relax and we'll get along fine. You guys, it's raping me! It's raping. You know, I got molested by D! What? This is about to get weird. Let's relax for a second. Let's just, let's just stop. These type of jokes are a staple in gross-out style comedies. When's the last time you pureled that thing? On television sitcoms. Now I'm gonna grind you like a fresh cup of coffee. <laughs> and in certain animated TV shows. No, 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 I'm abstinent! This is an affront to the Lord! No. In part one, we noted that when men are sexually assaulted, it's usually done by other men. Which is why our first video focused on male perpetrators. Now, if you haven't seen that one yet, I recommend doing so before continuing to watch this one. Julia, you need to see me. Oh, shit! In this episode, we're going to take a detailed look at the less frequent, but no less troubling pattern in comedy. We have a seat, Dale. Do I have to? Where men are sexually assaulted by women. We'll see about that. You think rape is funny? No, I think it's awful. Unless it's a woman raping a man. That's inherently funny. <laughs> Raph, really, are you just, really, are you just gonna sit here and let this happen? Just like we saw with humor about male perpetrators, humor invoking female perpetrators can involve a wide range of non-consensual behaviors. Whoa, mama! Snoop, help me! Whoa! You're fine, you're fine, you liked it. Neighbors! From casual jokes about sexual harassment. You're a shooting star and I want to go for a ride. God, I'm so afraid right now. To punchlines about rape. Last night, I sat on his nocturnal erection while he was sleeping. Okay, in some cultures, that would be considered rape. Yeah, pretty much in every culture. Oops. And in many oh. cases, the so-called joke... You did all this while I was unconscious? Mm -hmm. yep. ...is the act of sexual assault itself. Oh, that's my favorite. Rape. What? Rape. Rape. Oh, that's a rape. This is what raping is. You, you're a raper and you've raped me! That's a rape! Oh. Rape! Oh. Just relax there, Jodie Foster. Please, uh, I'll, I'll give you whatever you want. Uh, please, uh, anything you want. Anything I want. Occasionally, these comedic scenarios will involve supernatural rape or sexual extortion. But even in those cases, the assault is treated in a conspicuously flippant way. There's no lasting trauma, and the incident is rarely, if ever, mentioned again. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! My god. oh. Part of why these jokes are presented as harmless, light-hearted fun is because there's a widespread myth in our culture that men always want sex. Great movie. And therefore, men can't be raped. At least not by women. Relax, baby. This is, of course, false. Men can be raped. He's a bit down in the dumps. He's been raped. Yeah? He got raped. A woman just continued to have sex with me after I'd asked her to stop, that's all. Sounds like you were raped to me, Mark. Classic case. She didn't force anything up my bum. That's why it's not rape. Our society, by and large, tends to dismiss, or at least refuse to seriously acknowledge the fact that men can sometimes be targets of sexual assault. Well, you know what, I, I know he's still alive because his manhood is knocking on my lady door. <laughs> and that women can sometimes be perpetrators. All right, but yeah, I think that's either way. It does, I can't molest you, you know, it doesn't work that way because I'm a woman and you're the man, right, right? Back me up, girlfriend. Actually, a woman can sexually harass and even rape a man. Is that what happened here? Whenever this fact is brought up, it's met with confused questions like, how is that even possible? Well, the rape survivors organization Rain addresses that question directly, stating, in no way does an erection invite unwanted sexual activity. Normal, physiological responses do not in any way imply that you wanted, invited, or enjoyed the assault. 
I think that's worth reiterating. Normal physiological responses do not ever equal consent. And that applies to everyone, regardless of gender. Now, to be clear, what makes this type of comedy insidious is not that it presents rape or harassment as a good thing. In fact, the over-the-top inappropriateness of the behavior is what's supposed to be funny. Oh my god! Why does this keep happening to me? No! No, what makes these jokes insidious is they present the sexual assault of men as something that's ultimately harmless. I think I've just been raped. What's that? Raped. Here you go, mate. That'll take the edge off. This is so ingrained in our culture that even as you watch some of the clips in this video, you may catch yourself questioning whether or not some of the examples are really that bad. <laughs> or if they really amount to sexual harassment or sexual assault. And if those questions do pop into your head, I just ask you to keep in mind that all of these punchlines are built around non-consensual interactions. Oh, okay. Whether that be an unwanted kiss, a surprise butt grab, an instance of sexual harassment, or an act of rape. Unlike comedy about men assaulting other men, when men are assaulted by women, the joke is nearly always built around a gender-flipped role reversal, and hinges on the perceived social absurdity therein. In order to better understand what I mean by that, it's useful to examine this trope through the prism of Hollywood history. So let's turn back the clock 70 years and take a look at a 1949 musical called Neptune's Daughter. While you may not have heard of this movie, you've almost certainly heard the film's Academy Award-winning musical number. I simply must go. Baby, it's cold outside. The answer is no. Baby, it's cold outside. Baby, it's cold outside has come under increasing scrutiny in recent years. And for good reason. The male lead refuses to take no for an answer. That you drop so in. very nice. I'll hold your hand. The song is what's referred to as a mouse and wolf duet, in which the man takes on the role of predator and the woman the role of prey. So really, I'd better skirt. Despite the obvious display of sexual coercion, the whole scenario is played off as romantic flirtation. Maybe it's bad out there. Say, what's in this dream? The reason I bring this up is because there's a second, less famous version of Baby It's Cold Outside performed in the same movie. Really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. Only this time, the gender roles are reversed. And unlike the sincere version, this rendition is played entirely for laughs. They're just like My mother will start to worry. Beautiful watcher. The punchline here is rooted in the unexpected shock of seeing a woman taking on the customary male role of predator, while the unsuspecting man is forced into the traditionally female role of prey. I really can't stay. Oh, baby, don't hold out, baby. Just in case the gender flip joke wasn't clear enough already, in his attempt to get away from her advances, the flustered guy ends up accidentally wearing women's clothing. This same role reversal framework provides the comedic hook in a wide range of media hurry, Harry. that makes light of sexual assault and sexual harassment. Some classic Looney Tunes cartoons starring Pepe Le Pew and on the same gender-flipped punchline. Madame, control yourself. Your conduct is unseemly. Control yourself. Madame! Hey, people are looking at us. Compose yourself. Stop! Predatory interactions in older movies, TV shows, or cartoons were often less explicit than what we're used to seeing in contemporary media. But the pattern of gender-flipped comedy has remained remarkably consistent right up to the modern day. And it repeats more times in more media than we have room to mention. Save your strength, it's gonna be a lengthy night. Help! It's 
crazy tomatoes are raping me! Good one! <laughs> Something just snapped. I reached into my purse and pulled out a tampon. Then I pulled out my hot sauce. At first glance, these role reversals might seem like a subversive form of poetic justice. I shoved it up his ass. Especially when they're employed to teach a chauvinistic man a lesson. Like in the 2005 hit comedy, Wedding Crashers. Tattoo on the lower back. Might as well be a bullseye. Vince Vaughn plays a sleazy guy. What the fuck is going on? Who is subsequently sexually assaulted Baby, multiple times. I'm gonna make all your fantasies come true. But this is not a fan. And each of those assaults is framed as him getting a taste of his own medicine. We kind of had a crazy night. Yeah, we... did we? I don't really remember. Even though you seemed like a sure thing, I really wanted to make sure. When the victim is a villain, or some other scumbag character, it's not uncommon for sexual assault to be framed as him getting what he deserves. The problem with this karmic justice framing is that, as we all should have learned in kindergarten, two wrongs do not make a right. Revenge is not justice, and no one deserves to be raped, not even really bad people. I've got a headache. I've got a headache. Where are you going? Oh, bugger! I was that close. I touched it. Beyond a failure of basic morality, there's another disturbing implication embedded in many of these scenes. Oh. Lick it, lick it. Oh. Lick it ah. your okay. finger! Okay, okay. Because in order for the gender-flipped joke to really land, the audience must first buy in to certain gendered assumptions. Oh. Whoa, 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 that's, that's, that's a finger. Just you a tip. Can't, just, the that's tip it. is already too that's much. A, no, not okay, no, no. not, not okay. Oh. Namely, that men are naturally supposed to be sexually aggressive and women sexually submissive. Otherwise, it wouldn't seem so absurdly funny to see those gendered expectations Good show, oh boy. suddenly reversed. We expect to see men in predatory roles because domination and control, especially over women, is a central value in patriarchal masculinity. I had a really great time, but I should go. This is why when male characters are depicted as being controlled by women, Wait! Hey. instead of the other way around, it's often presented as the most demeaning thing imaginable for a man. Last night, Lois was the man. Good Lord. I just want you to know, Brian, I didn't cry. <laughs> hey, hot stuff, I've got a competition tomorrow. I could use a good luck snuggle. I'd rather talk about our feelings. Oh, did you yeah. have Let's do it. Oh, uh, uh, listen, my bulky flower, I, I have an early date. Tomorrow. I wasn't asking. <laughs> the toxic idea that it's the oh. ultimate humiliation oh. for men oh. to be treated like oh. women is then explicitly reinforced through the popular comic motif of women raping men with dildos. Stop. Stop! These jokes are almost inevitably followed by a walking funny punchline in the next scene. Another reason why role reversal jokes seem so unexpected is because in the real world, women are far less likely to commit sexual violence. Which means that unlike women, being preyed upon isn't a clear and present threat in the daily lives of most men. According to the Department of Justice, 80% of juvenile rape victims are girls, while 90% of adult rape victims are women. And, as I've already mentioned, when men are sexually assaulted, 
it's primarily done by other men. Baby, I'm gonna butter your bread. Now, statistics don't tell the whole story, but the numbers do tell us that adult men being sexually assaulted by women is relatively rare compared to the reverse. But it does happen, and sexual assault should always be taken seriously regardless of the frequency of the crime or the gender of the perpetrator. As Terry Crews reminded us during his Senate testimony, sexual assault is not really about sex, it's about power. But what he was effectively telling me while he held my genitals in his hand was that he held the power, that he was in control. And since we live in a world that is still largely male-dominated, we unconsciously expect people in positions of power or authority to be men. Which is why gender-flipped scenarios where women hold power over men are so commonly mined for absurdist humor. It time snoo snoo! Can't we just cuddle? No! Uh. In most of the examples we've looked at in this video, the jokes hinge on unbalanced power dynamics. No, no, no means please don't. Whether it's a boss sexually harassing an employee. Yeah, this is gonna work out just fine. A teacher abusing a student. A sober person assaulting someone who's intoxicated. Hands on your knees, please. Or a police officer accosting a suspect. To look back at it. These scenes are fundamentally about power and control. And that would be true regardless of the gender or sexuality of the characters involved. I'm sorry, I seem to have dropped my pen. Would you mind bending over and picking it oh, up? Yes, of course. Some comedians like Melissa McCarthy and Tina Fey like to use gender flipped scenarios Clumsy me. to try to raise awareness about predatory men. Slower this time. These punchlines rest almost entirely on the supposed absurdity of seeing a woman sexually harassing a man in the same ways that men have long harassed women in the workplace. Come on, if I did this to you, I'd get in so much trouble. Now what are you doing? Me, Come on. You'd get in trouble with your Come on. pants off. All right. <laughs> but however well intentioned these attempts at role reversal satire may be, they ultimately fall flat. That wasn't sexual harassment, they wanted it because even if they were somehow successful in highlighting men's predatory behavior, they do so by reinforcing the idea that the sexual abuse of men is inherently funny and absurd. No, no, you can't. I'm not doing that. I am not doing that. That is not no stop and I can't do that. Gender-flipped comedy can be an effective tool in illuminating gender bias, but not when it comes to sexual assault or sexual harassment. You wanna get back in that restroom and not rest? No. Uh oh, what's that? I gotta get back to my seat. Because the punchlines still leave us laughing at victims. Morning sexy. Ugh, ugh. Now Gina, you know this restraining order I have on you, it specifically covers not honking my bitch tits. Mm, does it cover this? <laughs> and comedy making fun of survivors is comedy that throws rocks down at those without power in a traumatic situation. You may have noticed some suspicious patterns emerging in the clips we've been looking at thus far. For instance, if the female perpetrator is depicted as conventionally attractive, then the man is frequently shown as enjoying the assault. It sounds like sexual harassment. Robbie, there's a fine line between sexual harassment and something awesome. Or at least being deeply conflicted about it. I, I don't think you should be in here. In which case, the guy's internal struggle with himself <laughs> to try to resist this woman's advances then becomes Listen, the focus of the joke. I, 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 uh... I don't think my girlfriend would like you sitting on me. <laughs> I think you like me sitting on you. In fact, I know you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's not the point. <laughs> Shut up, Kelso. This is your lucky day. The only real threat he faces is the threat to his own self-control. Uh, those are my pants. No. 
Rape scenes like these are carefully constructed and filmed as sexual fantasies. Concealed weapon. Where? Right here. Designed to be vicariously arousing for presumed straight male audiences. The only question is... Will he actually use it? And that's true even if the perpetrator is framed as being too controlling, too domineering. You want me to blow in it? No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, I don't need any blowing. Or otherwise unhinged. I'm not wearing any panties. Oh. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Now, we're focusing on comedies in this episode, but I should note that even in dramas, where a conventionally attractive female aggressor is clearly written to be the villain. That's something I want. Listen, hold on, boundaries, flag on the play. Okay, I'm very ticklish. We have needs, Sam. Relax. Jeez. Her acts of sexual assault or sexual harassment are still framed as an illicit sexual fantasy for straight male viewers. And the male character is never really presented as being completely powerless in most of these situations. I'm not letting you out of this room until you feel. It's also instructive to look at how other men react to these sexy assaults. Claire's mom just made me grab her hooters. Well, snap out of it. What, a hot older woman made you feel her cans? Stop crying like a little girl. Inevitably, other men express admiration or envy. What were they like anyway? They look pretty good, are they real? My man. And even congratulate the male victim for being assaulted. I think she has to rape me. Oh yeah? Did she really? Whoa, good for you. This is especially true when media depicts a hot teacher taking advantage of an adolescent male student. Despite the extreme power imbalance inherent in these scenarios, the sexual abuse is nonetheless framed as a way for young, shy, or awkward boys to gain self-confidence and achieve manhood status in the eyes of their peers. The only consistent exception to this rule are the rare pieces of media about the molestation of very young boys. But otherwise, when conventionally attractive older women prey on teenage boys, it's almost always presented as tantalizing and ultimately harmless. And that holds true, incidentally, in both comedies and dramas. Is this really happening? It's happening right now in my office. Media like this perpetuates the myth that men can't really be violated by women because they're always willing anyway. And that idea that all men want sex all the time, or at least should want sex all the time, is an especially harmful one. Does that inspire you? First and foremost, because it's not true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some men may not be interested in sex. No, still not getting it. Some men may not be interested in sex with women. Now I want you to throw me on the bed and have your beastie way with me. And some men may prioritize emotional connections or lasting companionship over physical intimacy. Is that the calm? I think it is. Excuse me, I've got to get to us. Secondly, the myth that real men should want sex all the time creates an enormous amount of social pressure on men to conform to that expectation. Nastiest <laughs> shit you've ever done. I'm talking about nasty. Uh, wow. So many stories are running through my head right now. So much so that the myth can become something of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Dude, are you gay? No, I'm not gay. No, I've borked a lot of women in my day. You borked? Wherein some men fear being ridiculed or losing social status with their peers if they don't perform some version of the sex-obsessed guy. 
At this point, you may have noticed another troubling pattern that occurs whenever the female perpetrator isn't presented as conventionally attractive. She's got me. She's really clamping down. In these scenarios, sexual assault is played for gross-out humor. Lloyd, I think that was her grandina. These jokes fall under a trope called the abhorrent admirer. And the associated visual gags carry with them a whole host of regressive ideas about gender. <laughs> On the one hand, the punchlines make fun of male survivors by framing them as weak, pathetic, or emasculated for being assaulted. We've never done this before. But we can take our time, darling. <laughs> On the other hand, the jokes target women <laughs> by presenting them as too fat too ugly, too masculine, or too old to be desirable. Hey, hey. You know, maybe, maybe this isn't such a good idea. Being bad seldom is. I think it's worth taking a moment to break down exactly what messages are being sent by these scenes. The love of God, no, no! On one level, the underlying assumption embedded in these jokes ties the value of women directly to their sexual desirability to straight men. Just relax. Unhandle this. And then ridicules the very idea that any woman who doesn't meet impossible Hollywood standards of beauty. Oh, God! Oh, would dare to express any kind of sexuality at all. In sharp contrast to what we saw earlier, other male characters inevitably react to these unsexy assaults by ridiculing the victim for being assaulted by a woman deemed unattractive. Reba! You don't know because you weren't there. Ugh, thank God I wasn't there. It's disgusting. It's revolting. You're nasty. How was she? This is another aspect of that larger media pattern that conflates women expressing their own sexual desires oh, shut up and take me. with acts of malice, deception, or outright villainy. I say you let me have him first. <laughs> women who are presented as sexually self-assured in ways that aren't about male fantasy wish fulfillment are turned into a joke and framed as predators. Doubly so if they happen to be women of color. Over the past decade or so, we've seen more and more comedy writers adding a veneer of self-aware meta-commentary to their dialogue, wherein they ironically call attention to a social issue. Gross, you were 14. So technically, you were raped. It wasn't rape. You can't rape a guy. Huh? However, the final punchlines in these productions nearly always undermine any social messaging the script may have had. Hey, Hoser, remember when I raped you in the library? Hoser? Thank you very much. I'm sorry. That was, uh, that's not part of the uh, whole thing. It's very disturbing. It's very avant-garde. Mm -hmm. You did the raping, right? No, he was drunk. But his thing wasn't. How do you rape a dude? More often than not, Meta-ironic humor. I thought he would like it. I thought all guys did. We, we do. Ends up reinforcing rather than challenging the status quo. A million guys would would, would kill to be raped by you. Oh, can you shut up already! Shows like South Park, Thirty Rock, and Always Sunny in Philadelphia have been particularly guilty of trying to have their cake and eat it too. I wasn't raped. Or I guess in this case trying to have their rape jokes and critique them too. And the woman in no way looked like Rick Moranis. Yeah. She totally did, I remember her. Remember her? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, dog. I wouldn't even sleep with her. 
As I've pointed out before, simply acknowledging something is not the same thing as meaningful criticism. Now, who is the teacher? What's his name? Well, it isn't a guy teacher, it's a woman. A woman? Yeah, she's having sex with a boy. Nice. Nice. What? We need to track this student down and give him his luckiest boy in America medal right away. In any discussion about the sexual assault of men or boys, you're almost guaranteed to hear the term double standard thrown around. That is a complete double standard. No, it's one standard for men, one standard for women. That's two standards. Socially speaking, a double standard is defined as a rule or principle that is unfairly applied to different people or groups in society. When it comes to sexual assault, we've already seen what can be described as a double standard reflected in a handful of clips. Enough! I am aware that a lot of people think that this young man is not really a victim, but someone that's living the ultimate teenage boy's fantasy. Those where men or boys are applauded for being assaulted by a woman if she's deemed attractive enough by other men. When your classmates became aware of your relationship with Ms. Luna, what happened at school? I just remember giving thousands of high fives. <laughs> Meanwhile, women are almost universally blamed and shamed regardless of the circumstances. Oh my God, check out this picture. Frank, is that you? And this is where some misunderstandings related to the double standard come in. Well done, sir. Guys, a teacher preying on a student is wrong. Yeah. If the teacher is male and the student is female, what happened to Frank is awesome. Standing ovation. Because while it's true that the sexual assault of men is not taken seriously, that doesn't mean the sexual assault of women is taken seriously. In fact, most of the time, female survivors are dismissed or simply not believed, and male attackers are rarely held accountable. Just a couple of pets. The sad reality is that our society doesn't take the sexual assault or abuse of anyone all that seriously. So he rapes them. In fact, some of the same movies and TV shows that include rape jokes about men also include rape jokes about women. Mo's Tavern. Hello, Mo. Your sister's being raped. Is that, is that one? When we see the sexual assault of men played for laughs in media, it is not evidence of some sort of anti-male bias. What it is evidence of is the same culture of blame and shame that female survivors deal with on a daily basis. So it's perhaps not surprising that many of those who have been most vocal in pushing back against the media pattern we've been discussing have been women. Sexual assault of men is a real problem and not a joke, despite the way we tend to talk about it. The truth is that sexual assault jokes targeting men and sexual assault jokes targeting women are really two sides of the same coin. And this morning, I made love to my wife, and she was still asleep, so I didn't have to be gentle. That's one of the most upsetting things I have ever imagined. Are you sure? Think about it again. As we've seen, both types of jokes prop up regressive ideas about gender, and both throw rocks down at the vulnerable and the victimized. Yes! Stop! Yes! Stop! Yes! Stop! Stop! Yes! Stop! Yes! Stop! Yes! Stop! Yes! When the sexual assault or harassment of men is turned into a joke, it not only trivializes men's experiences, it also contributes to the trivialization of rape in general. Because when male survivors are mocked and ridiculed, it makes it easier and more acceptable for our culture as a whole to shame and dismiss survivors of any gender. Thanks for watching. Now I know this can be a difficult and intense topic, so I've left some resources and additional information in the text below this video. In the coming months, I'll be producing a number of new video essays, including one on the myth that boys don't cry, another on the media pattern wherein men can only find redemption in death, and finally, I'll be doing an analysis of colonialism in modern board games. Now if you like these long-form video essays, please consider going over to Patreon and helping to fund this project there. 
I've also left a link to PayPal in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.